A block of mass M is kept on the floor of a freely falling lift. During the free fall of the lift, the block is pulled horizontally with a force of 5 Newton. The coefficient of friction is given as 0 0.1. The frictional force on the block will be. Okay. The first thing that boggles my mind about this question is that who is this person inside a freely falling lift pulling an object? Okay. If, if you happen to be in a freely falling lift, you better run for your life, not be pulling an object. But it's an elevator. It's closed. But where will you run? So might as well do some physics before you. Anyway. Okay. By the way, it is the same person who buys what 100 watermelons in a math problem. Okay. It's the same person. Anyway, let's look at the question. So the elevator is going to accelerate down with, uh, with acceleration G because, because it is in free fall. And someone is applying a force of F or something is applying a force of F towards the left on the block. Okay. So we need to find out friction. Okay. So what we can do is we can get into the frame of the elevator. We can observe this block from the elevator or probably it won't be a very good idea because it is a freely falling lift. You don't want to be in there. So let's analyze it from the ground frame itself. No worries. We can do it from the ground frame itself. Okay. So the first thing again we have to do is make the free body diagram. Okay. What is the free body diagram? Weight acting downwards. Normal reaction from the lift upwards. And the acceleration is GY because it is freely falling. Okay. Now, very easily I can figure out or I can write the F equal to MA equation here. Let's quickly do that. So, this becomes MG minus N is equal to M times acceleration. What is the acceleration? G. So, N is MG minus MG is equal to 0. The normal force is going to be 0 naturally. Because you and the elevator both are accelerating downwards with G. So there'll be no, you won't be pushing the floor of the elevator and the elevator is not going to push you. So the normal force is going to be zero. That is, there is no contact between the person and, or sorry, the block and the elevator. Okay. So if there is no contact between the block and the elevator, would there be any friction? There won't be any friction. So the friction. In this case is going to be zero. Simple question, straightforward. Let's move forward. A ball of mass M moving with speed U undergoes a head-on perfectly elastic collision with mass Nm initially at rest. The fraction of energy transferred to the second ball by the first ball is okay. So the situation is very simple. There's a ball of mass m moving with velocity u is another ball with mass nm it is at rest and then collision happens and then both the blocks or both the balls would be moving with some velocity okay the question is how much what is the fraction of kinetic energy transferred okay what does that mean what is the fraction of kinetic energy transferred okay so let's say if this has kinetic energy k and the all the kinetic energy of the system, if we take both the balls as a system, all the kinetic energy was with ball M, okay, because it was the only ball moving. Let's say now after this contact, after this collision, the kinetic energy of Nm becomes Kf, okay. So the kind, the fraction of kinetic energy transferred is so out of this K total kinetic energy, how much was transferred? So we have to say in terms of fraction my fraction would be kf upon k so this is the thing that i'm looking for this is going to be my answer okay what fraction of the kinetic energy was transferred so okay so if this becomes kinetic energy kf then kf upon k would be the fraction that was transferred to the ball nm okay so now this problem becomes very simple now it's a very typical situation in which we have the initial velocities, we have the final velocity, we have the coefficient of restitution, so we can quickly solve it. So let's quickly solve this question. Okay, it is moving with velocity u. Initially, the velocity is, so I'm going to call this u2 is equal to 0. Then after collision, let's say its final velocity is v1 and the final velocity of nm is 
v2 okay first thing what is the equation that we write we write the equation for conservation of linear momentum if we take both these balls as a system there is no external impulsive force acting on the system so the linear momentum of the system will be conserved so that's the first equation i am going to write down okay momentum of ball the first ball that is going to be mu what is the momentum of the second ball zero okay initial momentum we are talking about now what is the final momentum of ball 1 it is mv1 what is the final momentum of ball 2 that is nmv2 that becomes my equation 1 the second equation will be for the elastic collision or for that matter any kind of collision if we know the coefficient of restitution we can write down very simply okay so this becomes e times the velocity of approach okay so what do we have we have e is equal to velocity of separation of upon velocity of approach so velocity of separation will become e times velocity of approach so i'm going to write the velocity of approach directly okay that is going to be u1 minus u2 so eu minus 0 initial velocity u initial velocity 0 that is the velocity of approach this becomes minus v1 plus v2 so basically velocity of separation is v2 minus v1 so i've written it in this fashion so that we can easily cancel them out okay now very simple m gets cancelled out from both the sides and then if i have to find v2 i simply have to add both of these equations okay and e is given to me as 1 so this is u plus u becomes 2u is equal to v1 v1 gets cancelled and i will have n plus 1 times v2 so v2 becomes 2u divided by n plus 1 that is the final kinetic energy of ball n okay in this question do i really need to find out the kinetic energy or the velocity of ball m not really because i just want the kinetic energy of nm divided by the initial kinetic energy of m so let's quickly do that so the kinetic energy final of nm is half nm that is the mass into v2 square so this is going to be 4 u square divided by n plus 1 square correct now i have to divide it with the initial kinetic energy of nm so that is going to be and i'm going to divide it directly over here that becomes half m u square because initially it was moving with the velocity u now simply you cancel out the terms which are going to get cancelled so finally i am left with 4n upon n plus 1 square and that is going to be my answer it's that simple okay let's look at the options hence d is going to be my final answer a thin rod has length of 5 meter what is the ratio of moment of inertia of the rod about an axis perpendicular and passing through its center to moment of inertia of the rod about an axis perpendicular and passes through one of the edges of the rod okay so in this kind of question whenever you get this kind of question the first thing you should do is fold your hands and say thank god you have given me a very very simple question okay which is not going to take more than 30 seconds to solve it cannot get simpler than that it's very basic question okay let's quickly solve it and go ahead okay what is the situation the moment of inertia of the rod uh, through its perpendicular bisector we know what is that that is moment of inertia is equal to ml square by 12 we know that what is the moment of inertia of the axis which is passing through the end of the rod we know that as well that is ml square upon 3 the ratio of these two quantities is the answer and what is the ratio the ratio is going to be this divided by this and that is going to give me 1 upon 4 it's that simple let's move ahead okay a thin rod has a length of 5 meter okay sorry what is the correct option the correct option is 1 by 4 now let's move ahead two concentric rings one with radius 0 0.5 meter and mass 1 kg 
and other having radius 1 meter and mass 2 kg are placed together on a horizontal table. Find out net moment of inertia of the system about an axis perpendicular to the plane in passing through their common center. Okay, we have two concentric, concentric rings, the dimension and the mass is given. Okay, so about that same axis which is passing through their common center and perpendicular to the plane, we want to find the total moment of inertia of the system. Okay, how does this question sound? Extremely difficult, right? I'm sweating right now. So difficult. Okay, so the good thing about moment of inertia is it's a scalar quantity. So the net moment of inertia would be the moment of inertia of the first one plus the moment of inertia of the second. So we can calculate the moment of inertia of all the particles of the system and add them together. That's all. Okay, so very simply, what will be the moment of inertia of the yellow ring that you see? M R square. I'm going to directly substitute it. What is M? M is 1 kg. And what is R? R is 0 0.5 square. What is the moment of inertia of the blue ring? Again, M R square. So M is 2 kg times what is the radius? 1 square. So this is going to give me 0 0.25 plus 2. That is 2.25 kg meter square. How difficult was that? Wasn't it the most difficult question so far? <laughs> All right. So the correct answer is going to be 2.25 kg meter square and don't forget to thank god because you are getting so easy questions let's proceed a system of circular disc of mass 900 gram and radius 4 meter and a circular ring of mass 2 kg and radius 5 meter are stacked about their common center as shown in the figure what is the moment of inertia of the system about an axis passing through that common center perpendicular to the plane of the disc and the ring Again, very similar situation. Now, in place of the ring, they have put a disc. Is that going to make my life very difficult? Probably not. Okay. So, uh, all we have to do is find the moment of inertia of the ring, find the moment of inertia of the disc, and simply add them up. And both of them are standard results. Okay. So, the net moment of inertia is going to be I1 plus I2. Very simple. Now, I1, I am taking as the moment of inertia of the blue ring. What is the moment of inertia of the ring about this axis? It is mr square. I'm directly going to substitute m into r square. r square is going to be 5 square. Plus, what is the moment of inertia of the disk? It is mr square by 2. Okay, so the mass is 0 0.9 kg. Be careful with the units. Into the radius, which is 4 square divided by 2. Simple. If I calculate that, I'm going to get 57.2 kg meter square. Simple, easy, proceed. So the correct answer is going to be option D, 57.2 kg meter square. 